Welcome to electron line. So the big difference between the smaller stars like the Sun and smaller and the larger stars and the supermassive stars, the big difference is how they get to be red giants. For smaller stars like the Sun, when the core fills up with helium and the entire hydrogen is being used up and turned into helium inside the core, the core doesn't have a high enough temperature to start converting helium to carbon and the core begins to collapse. The collapse of the core gravitationally builds up more heat until the core reaches a temperature of 100 million degrees. At that point, the star has massively expanded in size because the layers around the core have been converting hydrogen to helium from the additional heat generated from the core collapse. And eventually, when the core reaches 100 million Kelvin, helium begins to burn into carbon and that starts that ensues then into the helium flash where all of a sudden the core begins to start nuclear fusion again and a massive amount of heat is generated then everything settles down the star then collapses into its red giant size and then will stay on the on the red giant state for about 50 million years but for the larger stars before the star turns into red giant so much heat is generated inside the core that even though hydrogen was being converted to helium and the inner core helium will begin to be converted into carbon and carbon at the very center will be turned into oxygen. Temperatures required for that, it requires 100 million degrees to turn helium into carbon and 600 million degrees to turn carbon into oxygen. The reason for that is as the nuclei becomes larger and larger, the repulsive forces between them grows and becomes larger as well and therefore you need a much higher velocity much higher temperatures to get the nuclei to move at speeds to cause the nuclear fusion reaction to occur by the time oxygen converts to neon you need temperatures upwards of a billion degrees and to convert neon into magnesium you need temperatures over one billion degrees in the core but these large stars from four to eight times the mass of the sun and even larger greater than eight times the mass of the sun they, have, they build up so much heat at the core from the ensuing next process, nuclear fusion process, which generates much more energy than converting hydrogen into helium. The core continues to increase in temperature such that at the very center of the core, these higher temperatures are reached. And by the time you get to stars where the mass is greater than eight times the mass of the sun, you can then see that we even get to the point where oxygen is converted to neon and neon is converted to magnesium with temperatures over 1 billion degrees at the very center of the core. And so the star slowly increases in size and starts moving across the HR diagram until it turns into what we call the red giant branch where it becomes a supermassive red giant. So these, this is why there's a difference between what happens to lower mass stars versus higher mass stars. In lower mass stars, you simply can build up a temperature to get to the next fusion process until the core collapses and generates heat from the collapse, where here the heat is generated simply by the core being so large and being so active converting hydrogen to helium, where temperatures of 100 million degrees are reached, so then you can get to the next process, even higher temperatures are reached, you get to the next process and so forth. So over time, the star just becomes hotter and hotter at the core and it moves out of the main sequence into the red giant stage. And that's the difference between the supermassive stars versus the regular size stars. So, the mass of the sun mm -hmm. after the red giant, mm -hmm. we, you wouldn't see the difference between that or four mass of the sun. Oh yes, there is a difference in that, first of all, they're brighter because they're higher up in the luminosity and they go through different stages. So you follow them and so they have different but the colors and different luminosities from the four to eight mass stars so you can't tell the difference when they become red giants mm -hmm. so when you see a red giant you could go back and say this was a, this was a well sun. um we can see the snapshots of where they're at it takes so long that we can only see them where they're at at the moment we can't follow their story because that takes thousands and millions yeah. of years for them to do so but yeah we can over time, we can see the different kinds of stars, different sizes, different brightnesses, and different luminosities, so we can then start mapping that into what we think is going on in the centers. 